Okay, so let's say that you want to burn a DVD, a playable DVD, with menus. To do that, we're going to, uh, first we're going to go to Final Cut Pro. So if you, you've taken all of your multiple pieces that you want to put on here, onto your timeline, we're going to position our little playhead at the beginning of the first clip. We're going to come up to Mark, and down to Markers and add. And this will add a marker. So now we're going to go back to mark and markers and we're going to select edit. And this will open up the edit markers window where we can change this marker from a simple marker into a chapter marker. And we can change our name to the title of the piece that he worked on. So we're going to call this EMF slash Fox 11. And we're going to put a one. And we're going to click OK. And you'll notice the screen in your viewer now changes from that red marker to a purple chapter marker uh, with the title that you just gave it. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to skip ahead. And again, we're going to click Mark, and Markers, and Add. And again, that will make a marker number two. Mark, Markers, Edit. And again, we'll name it. and we'll click add chapter marker and click OK. And we'll repeat for each of these pieces until you get to the end. So your finished project will look something like this, where you've got your chapter markers at the beginning of each story and you can check as you kind of go along that what the name is is what that story is supposed to be about. Once you've got all of your chapter markers on your timeline, on your sequence, we're going to go up to File, Export, and QuickTime Movie. So that's File, Export, QuickTime Movie. We'll give this a name and save it to Data. Your settings can remain current settings. Where it says Markers, you make sure that this says chapter markers. So just click on the drop down and make sure that that says chapter markers. And once you've done that, you've named it chapter markers, click save. And this will export out an MOV file uh, with chapter markers that you can then import into iDVD. Alrighty, so once uh, Final Cut is done exporting the file, we can go up to Final Cut Pro and quit Final Cut Pro. And I'm going to go ahead and just save this, in case I need to come back to it. And I'm going to come down on our dock, and I'm going to click on iDVD. And where I told you to ignore this screen for the one step for movie, in this instance, since you want to create one with menus, we're going to click Create a New Project and we're gonna call it sample project and we're gonna save it to the data drive um, if you're working in uh, standard definition 4x3 you can keep it 4x3 if you're working with HD videos you can go ahead and click this over to widescreen uh, all of the ones that uh, were on Linden's timeline were standard def so I'm just gonna keep this 4x3 and I want to click create and that's going to start me off in iDVD with a generic project template. I'm a big fan of this particular project. Uh, when this pops up, I'm going to uh, use the theme buttons. I'm a big fan of this project because you don't actually need to load any kind of still or uh, video into this little drop zone over here. Um, because, I mean, it's fairly plain and fairly generic, so it, 
you don't necessarily have to drop stuff in here to make it look nice. Once you've got uh, once you've got your project, I'm going to uh, come over here and switch this to standard. So click project, switch to standard, 4 by 3 Again, if you're working with a high definition, uh, if you're working with high definition files, you can just leave it 16 by 9. Uh, once I've selected my type of project, you can use any of them. You don't have to use soft frame. You could use vintage vinyl if you want. Although that girl is terrifying. Once you've got your type of theme that you want, uh, you're going to come over here, click File and Import Video. That's File, Import, Video. And now you're going to go to the data drive and find that MOV file. The Linden Transfers. And click Import. And the nice thing about this, once you import it, it's going to take whatever the file name is. Uh, of that particular MOV file that you exported out of Final Cut and it's going to replace the title on your screen with that name. Uh, you can always change that, highlight it, and just type over top of it. We're just going to call these news reports. You can adjust your font, uh, whether or not it's regular or if it's bold. You can adjust the size if you want all that stuff in the little drop down menu you can slide this stuff around if you want to move it around a little bit I'm gonna take this back down to 24 and I'm gonna kinda of slide it over towards the center or maybe I'll just line it up right over here and again down here on your bottom your play movie and scene selection you can change those names if you want um, I personally like to just call this play or play all You can adjust uh, how it shows up if you want a little drop shadow or anything like that by clicking on this little inspector window button down here. And then you can click shadow. You can change the font color if you want to make it red, which is awful. Or cantaloupe, which is again kind of awful. So we're going to go back to snow. And you can do the same with scene selection. Let's try black. Black's not bad. So yeah, we're gonna go back and we're gonna change you to black. So that you really stand out. So now because you created those chapter markers in Final Cut, if you click on scene selection, you'll see each of the stories where you put a chapter mark. It's broken up that MOV file into parts for you, so you don't actually have to go through and chop it up yourself. You can click the little play, the preview DVD playback button down here, and it will show you what it's going to look like when you pop it in a DVD player. Uh, you can see how the remote will bounce. You can click the play all, and it will actually play through it. And when you're done checking it, you can click exit. And if you're completely happy with everything, you can come down here, click on our little burn button. You'll get this warning screen that tells you that you haven't put any kind of picture in the little drop zone over here. Um, if you don't have a picture that you want to put in there, if you don't have video that you want to put in there, if you just want it to be gray, then you can click continue burning. The program will ask you to insert a DVD. So we'll pop a DVD in um, and it will, the computer will read and make sure that the DVD is actually blank and usable. And then it will start the encode process and the burn process. It'll go through, it'll render all this good stuff. And just like with the one step for movie, once it finishes rendering and encoding, it will burn the disc and then it will eject the disk and ask you if you want to make another one. If you don't want to make a second copy, you can just click quit and exit out of iDVD.